kind of did something bad. I ended up, uh... Wanna ride the go-karts? No. What's up, you guys? I, uh, I'm so tired. I had to wake up super early to take my mom to the doctor. She had to get a procedure done. I'm on my way to my friend's house. I gotta pick up some gear that he borrowed from me, and I have some gear I borrowed from him. So I'm gonna do the old switcheroo. I'm almost home now. Got my stuff. Now I can do some uh, more recording stuff video stuff probably don't need for a while but any stuff that I use like when I lend it out I like to try and keep it close by because lend it out too long because that's how things get lost and forgotten about and then I'm like hey what did I do with that thing that I had I lost it someone else had it and never said uh, hey I still got the thing you know so it happens I just try and prevent it, you know, if I can. So, I was trying to decide what I should work on today. I had to go to the bathroom earlier and I was just, I, I had to walk past my bedroom, I saw my bed, I was like, that looks great. I don't know, whatever I decide to do, I'm gonna take you with me. Hey guys, uh, next day, it's been super cold. Last night it was like, uh, it was like, 12 degrees out, but it's actually kind of nice out. And if you guys follow me on Facebook, I bought a go-kart to redo for me and my daughter. And then I ended up finding one the next day that I got for myself and like beefed it up, <clears throat> you know? So we are going to try, ride them around the yard for a little bit today. Our yard's like decently big. It's enough for us to just like putt around, but we share a yard with our neighbor and our neighbor has a dog. So we just have to watch out for dog dirt. So I'm gonna, Check for dog poop and uh, get the go-karts ready. I hate dog poop so much. We lived here for a long time and it really sucks. Like, we like to spend time out in the yard a lot. I don't think my neighbors watch this vlog. If you do, I'm sorry guys. I told you guys before, I'm just, I love dogs. I just, we like to be outside in the yard and we can look out for it. But once we had a kid, she didn't know, you know? So if you guys have kids, you understand. Let me show you guys the carts. I posted them on my personal Facebook. Like as I was doing them, I did mostly some before and after pictures. I didn't really do any progress pictures, but a couple of people said like, yo, you should have vlogged about this or whatever. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I didn't think anybody would really on this channel would be interested. This is the first one I got. It was, uh, I'll post a picture now of the before, but this is it now. Pretty sweet. It was definitely beat up. Got it looking pretty good now. It's just a little, kids cart like I barely barely fit on it and then this one's mine that's the back I modified it I put a new engine on it if you guys follow anybody like cars and cameras and red beards garage on YouTube I put a new predator engine jetted it put a high performance intake on it header with the performance muffler probably gonna put heavier valve springs let me pull this out so I can show you guys a better view of it sorry guys I'm still having trouble with this focus there we go I was I was thrashing around in it little bit today but uh so it's a little muddy this is it right here guys so this is a murray hard drive they don't make these anymore and it's pretty quick i got it up to 31 but i geared it mostly for torque so it'll have more power to like drive off road and go up hills and stuff like that but you can see how muddy i got it today I, did, I took it out and I had good, like decent clothes on, but I had to like modify this back end. If you guys know anything about the Murray hard drives, they had a tiny sprocket with like a gear reducer. But yeah, I don't know, I'm gonna start these up. Hopefully me and the fam have fun just thrashing around the yard. So let's do it. I've actually gotten this uh, kid's cart up to 26 miles an hour. It's way too fast. My daughter's not big enough to drive it on her own yet, but it was just an engine I kind of had laying around, so I threw it on there. But it's the first time the family's gonna go ride together, so we're just gonna see what's up. All right, I think we're pretty much ready. We found this, there was water in this bucket, and so there's little ice cubes of stars. I have one, I have one. <laughs> you don't wanna ride the go-karts? No. All right, maybe your mommy are gonna ride for a little bit. I just want to ride one around a little bit. 
You could ride on Princess Peach with me. All right, you don't have to. done riding go-karts playing outside finally for once did you have fun yes did you have fun on the go-kart buggy yeah <laughs> I'm gonna go get some food we starving all right okay so uh, got everything cleaned up and I decided to use my leaf blower to sweep everything out so everything's looking pretty good Downside to using a leaf blower to blow out the garage is that one, it makes it super dusty, which you probably can't tell, but it's actually cleared up a little bit and makes it smell like two cycle fumes. So right now letting it air out. But in the meantime, I just wanna show you guys what I did. So this was the space that was already kind of cluttered up. Uh, oops, we're going the wrong way. This, <laughs> um, got this cleared out too, but now I can have my uh, toolbox, I got this little box that has all my bits and bobs in it. This toolbox has been in here, but I usually keep that in my car just in case I break down or whatever. Uh, but now I got tons of space to work on this motor. Got some uh, paper towels, a couple hooks for GoPro parts, uh, my earplugs for when I'm grinding and stuff like that, little brush that doesn't stay on the hook. Biggest thing too is I ran this extension cord over to an outlet so I can uh, plug in this little adapter. Now I have a light plugged in so i had a light here already but this one has a switch that works so now i can just come in hit that switch all right so the fumes are pretty much cleared out hopefully uh, i don't think my neighbor watches this but hopefully neighbor um this doesn't upset you that i cleared it up you got a ton of space now and of course this is your garage so uh, now you have a workbench as well to work on stuff so I'm gonna put the uh, camera down, get the motor up here, and uh, start digging into it, see what uh, if it's fixable or not. <sighs> this is it. Um, this motor came off of black and teal go-kart, the little two-seater kids one. You guys uh, hopefully saw yesterday if the footage was good. A lot going on with it. It does turn. Uh, however, when I do turn it so much, it gets stuck. So I'm not sure what's hitting. It's definitely inside the motor. I don't know if there's rust up in the head or something's rusted down here. So I gotta open it up. That's probably gonna be my biggest issue. If that's not fixable, I'm just gonna junk this motor. The other issue is there was a centrifugal clutch on here um, that was in bad shape, but I didn't have a wheel puller to get this off. I was trying to use an angle grinder to like, cut off as much as I could. And unfortunately what happened was 
I cut too far down. It doesn't look like you guys can see that, but I cut down past this sleeve here. This sleeve will come off. I cut down into this shaft, which is the crankshaft that goes through the motor, which is probably not good. They don't make these motors anymore, as far as I know. I have seen the parts on eBay. This is gonna go on a go-kart. It's probably not that big of a deal. I'm not sure how much I cut into it. It doesn't look like it's that much, but the biggest thing is getting inside this motor to see if it's just been water in there and there's rust and I can kind of clean it up just to get it going. There's a lot of other issues too. It does get spark, which is good. This gas tank, when I put gas in it, it leaked. I'm not sure if it's from the hose, going from the hose to the carburetor. I don't know what happened here, but whoever had this motor before, there's these cuts. Hopefully it's just the hose. Um, this gas cap doesn't really fit on there. It's so hard to get off right now because it's like cross-threaded. And the other thing is this carburetor. These engines don't have a choke. You would usually just push this button. It's kind of like if you have a lawnmower, sometimes they have this prime button, you push it. I can't even push it. The rubber is so hard and old that you, you can't even push it. So I don't even know if I need a new carb or if I can just replace this button. One thing that was hard to find, there's two screws that bolt to here and it's a housing for the air filter. Biggest thing is I have to get inside this motor. So let's do it to it. Hey guys, I just realized something. I, I, I got this, these bolts came out of this side cover pretty easy. Uh, I used my mallet to tap it up that you guys probably saw in the time lapse. And I don't know what I was thinking because I told you guys about this sleeve being stuck on here. I can't get this case up past the sleeve because, well, the sleeve's in the way. So I gotta figure out how to get this off. All right, guys, in this hole, there's a screw with a special kind of head uh, called an Allen key that, well, I'm sure you know what a freaking Allen screw is. So when I was trying to get this off before, um, I, I was starting to strip it out. So that's why I started to cut it. If I can't get it out, I have another neighbor that hopefully can help me. He works on motors and stuff too. So uh, if he's home, I'm gonna give him a call, but I uh, was trying to do this on my own first. So the drill bits I have are kind of cheap and they don't really do well with metal, especially hardened steel. And I think this sleeve is hardened steel, so I had to keep switching back between bits because the only bit that I have that will cut hardened steel is 3 8 bit, which is like this bigger circle here, the shiny circle. I think I've gotten as far as I can go with what I have. I'm not really sure how else to do it. If you guys know a way, a better way to do this, I would like to know. I'm still kind of learning. I know a little bit about motors and stuff like that, but I'm still learning, so. So I tried, uh, <clears throat> couple different things to try and get that off but couldn't get it off so I called my neighbor he has a tool he thinks that can help but he's not home right now so I just I gotta wait for him which is no big deal so I think in the meantime take the other parts off of the motor I think they have a problem if they're good I'll know what I need to buy and uh, if the motor's shot not worth fixing it's already taken apart maybe I can just part it out so I made a cool, good discovery, and uh, which kind of sucks that it happened this way. This is what I get for assuming. I wish I wouldn't have uh, cut that up because the crankshaft was okay. I would have had to replace that clutch anyway, so I still would have had the same problem with trying to get that sleeve off, but let me show you guys. So if I didn't show you earlier, I was uh, spinning this side of the motor, and I showed you how at a certain point it kind of got stuck, and I assumed it was something inside. There was some rust or something. But as I was taking this apart to find out some other problem, to figure out some of the other problems I was telling you guys about. So this thing right here is the ignition coil, and I took the bolts out already, but it's bolted somewhere around there. And I noticed when I spun this, let me just move this. I'm working with one hand here, guys. When the motor would get stuck, it was right when this part here, which is the magnet, got to the ignition coil. And then I pushed it as far as I could and I looked at it and there was no gap in between this and where the ignition coil goes. And there's usually a tiny gap, like only about the thickness of a business card. So I took that ignition coil off and you wouldn't believe what happens now. It spins freely. It was getting stuck because someone took this off and didn't gap it correctly. Dang. Okay, so I got more good news. I'm getting more and more excited about this engine. I know you're probably not supposed to do this, but I put a little bit of water in the gas tank 
and I swished the water around. It didn't leak anywhere except for that hole where it's supposed to come out anyways, that nipple. This one cut here that I was showing you guys earlier, all these cuts, this is the only one that leaks, but this plastic gas tank, and I'm pretty sure I can fix that. I have a plastic gas tank on my car that I fixed years ago. I used an old tip on a soldering iron and like kind of melted the crack back together, like like welding, but with plastic. And then I used, um, oh, I can't remember, I think it's JB Weld. There was like a two part epoxy thing. You just kind of like squeeze it and then you just like mix it and smear it right on there and it hardens really hard. And it was made for plastic, so so this gas tank's good, which is great because I think the cheapest one I found was on eBay. It was like 50 or 60 bucks. That's why I wanted to look into this motor more to see if it was gonna be worth it. The other thing I wanted to mention though, this was the fuel line that went from, this part was connected to the gas tank right there, and this part goes to the other part of the motor called the carburetor. There is a slit, and it's cut all the way through. I was gonna replace the hoses anyway, so boom. So this, this is the carburetor brings air and the fuel mixture in, goes up here, and this goes into the engine. And it's cracked right here. And I'm pretty sure this is cast aluminum, and I don't know how to weld this, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find this part, so this might be a huge issue. All right, so I'm still waiting for my buddy. Got this thing off, definitely cracked. But I wanted to show you guys this. This is really bad. Inside the carburetor bowl is not supposed to look like this, and it is not supposed to have dirt. See that dirt? Yeah, that's not supposed to be in there. So, uh, my friend, uh, couldn't make it, so, um, kind of did something bad. You remember how I showed you the crankshaft? Yeah, so I, uh, yeah, I ended up just, uh, cutting it off which was great because I was able to get into the crankcase and I found out, you know, nothing's wrong in there. Uh, when I was online looking at parts before because I thought I was going to need a new crankshaft, uh, I thought that I had saw it for like 25 bucks. Well, I, I did see one for 25 bucks. The problem is, is uh, it's not the right one. I actually found the manual for this engine, found the part number. It's actually 70 bucks. So, yeah, with all the other parts I need just to get this engine running, it's probably going to be more than a hundred bucks, which is pretty unfortunate because you can just go to Harbor Freight and get a new engine for 120 bucks. The rest of the engine is good, but the engine as a whole is not good. It is what it is. I'm going to sell this one, hopefully get a bigger two-seater, one that fits like two adults. If you guys were into this, let me know. Um, this is something I do like doing. It's one of my hobbies. I come out here and tinker around if that's something you guys want to follow. But any suggestions you guys have, it's just me figuring it all out on my own. So thanks guys for checking it out. Yeah. See ya. All right.